A question that I've been asked a lot lately is, what's a good mouthpiece for high notes? Time to answer that. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Brian from Airflow Music. If you're new around here, I'm a trumpet player and teacher, originally from the UK but now based in New York City. I set up Airflow Music to publish my books for brass players, but I've also been producing a bunch of videos with tips to make brass playing easier for you. I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and check out a bunch of other videos if you haven't already. A frequently asked question lately in the various social media messages and comments that I receive is, what's the best mouthpiece for high notes? Now, no matter what our opinionated friends on the various trumpet-related Facebook groups may say, there's no one good answer to that. I already talked about mouthpieces at some length back during the Trumpet A to Z series, most particularly on the video M for mouthpieces. I think that's my most viewed video on YouTube, so you've probably seen it, but just in case you haven't, you'll find it linked on screen up here or in the description below this video. In that video, I pointed out some of the various design elements that go into a mouthpiece and how they affect different aspects of playing. The message I was hoping to get across is that one size doesn't fit all. This is obviously true for the diameter of the mouthpiece, and therefore the general feeling of whether it's too small or too large. However, many other preconceptions we have about mouthpieces aren't necessarily true either. For example, we're given to believe that shallow mouthpieces make it easier to play higher. This is not strictly true. The shallower cup will encourage a brighter sound, which may focus the upper register better. But we tend to not consider that that shallower cup is also accompanied by a tighter mouthpiece throat and a less open backbore shape. If we, the player, can't make the adjustment to the smaller airstream that this shallower mouthpiece will accept, then we tend to bottom out or otherwise close off when we try to play on it. In other words, if we can play somewhat efficiently and in accordance with how a shallower mouthpiece is set up to work, then there's a good chance we'll have some success with it. However, this is actually true for any mouthpiece, and it really brings me to the point that I want to make. It's not the mouthpiece that makes you able to play high, low, or anywhere else in between. That's important, so I'm going to say it again. It's not the mouthpiece that makes you able to play high, low, or anywhere in between. Let's stop looking for a magic mouthpiece that will do all the work for us, and instead spend our time and energy on actually doing the work. Learning to play the trumpet, or any other instrument, does take practice. To give an example, here's a 3C. Having gone through my mouthpiece drawer here in the studio just now, this is the largest mouthpiece I have on hand. It does feel a good deal larger than the mouthpieces I usually play on. Despite that, I have confidence that I can definitely play a G over high C on it. That 3C mouthpiece is definitely too big for me, but my air use and fundamentals still allow me to play it. If you've seen me play before on one of these videos, then you'll probably notice that I'm working harder than usual, but it's still possible. So now we've established that there's no magic mouthpiece which gets things done for you, I think what we need to do is start asking better questions. Like, is it important to find a mouthpiece that's appropriately sized for me? The answer to that one is yes, absolutely. Let's think about this a slightly different way. When we're talking about mouthpieces, very often we compare them to shoes. The parallels are several. Well-fitting shoes support your feet and therefore the rest of your body. They make it comfortable to walk around and be on your feet all day. And there are many different styles geared to different activities. It's fairly easy to find well-fitting shoes. Even in this day and age, we have the option to go to a shoe store and get measured it's at least a good place to start, so we can dial it in further. Now, admittedly, that's something that's harder to find with mouthpieces. I'm not aware of a series of stock measurements we can get taken, which will help us suggest what is going to be right for us. Therefore, we're left a little bit more to trial and error. When trying mouthpieces, the first thing is to try and find something that you can actually fit your lips into. As I've said before, I don't really care what your embouchure looks like, apart from one basic rule I tried to stick to. The inner rim of the mouthpiece should anchor outside the ring of muscle that surrounds the red of your lips, both top and bottom. 
Now, if you have very big lips, don't give up hope. There are lots of mouthpiece makers who make many mouthpieces in many different sizes. The Schilke Company, for instance, do make trumpet mouthpieces in wider than average diameters. If you've been struggling to find a mouthpiece that fits, try looking at Schilke's with a 17 to 20 rim as a starting place, or maybe even larger. While they can be harder to find, they do exist. After that, on whichever mouthpiece you pick up, make sure that you can comfortably play over your entire range. Have the mouthpiece feel comfortable on your face, and have it make a sound that you like. That means while you're testing to make sure that the low register works as well as the high register. If either of them doesn't, experiment with sizes a little. Try both a little smaller and a little larger to see if something works better. In the end, you have to find the best balance for you. Beyond that, it's a question of practicing and actually putting in the work. I've been sharing plenty of tips on getting your air under control so you're not blowing too hard. I've also made plenty of videos with tips on virtually every trumpet-related subject. By the way, I have no plans of stopping, so if there's a particular topic you can't find in one of the existing videos, then please leave a comment and ask a question. After all, that's what got us here in the first place. I hope you found this video helpful, even if it's not the answer you were necessarily looking for. If you have found it useful, please hit that like button. And if not, the other button works too. Although if you really don't like it, try hitting the thumbs down one twice. I'm here with videos a couple of times a week generally, between these Trumpet Pro Tips and then the Exercise of the Week videos on Monday. So please subscribe to the Airflow Music channel if you haven't already, and click the notification bell that pops up so you're notified when a new video is uploaded. I'll see you next time. Now, go practice.